Hey guys, welcome Magic Phoenix. It's a new comic book day for the week of March 29th. We're going to get started right now. This episode brought to you by Paul and Tim Do a Thing. We do a thing. We do. And you should watch that thing. Yeah. It's over on their channel. Links in the description down below. And uh, yeah, we got a Woo. bunch of new stuff coming out. Hey guys, it's Tim from Capes and Scales. Paul and Tim Do a Thing, the comic book store, and Team Ashen. Here are your trades for this week. I've got Infinite Frontier, volume... Well, I guess it's the whole thing. It's not a volume. Uh, that was an interesting story. We've got I Am Batman. This is volume what? Two? Three? Two. Continuing that story in hardcover form. I think the first trade's out in regular soft floppy style. we got Hard Boiled. Did you ever read a Hard Boiled? Look at that cover. It's gross. Some Jeff Darrow art. That's always fun. We have Avatar. Adapt or Die. They bend air. That's not true. We've got... I am Albert Einstein. I think this is a new printing of this. These books are super cool. They're, uh, oh boy, Chris Eliopoulos. It's Brad, Brad Meltzer's history books. They're great. Astronomer Countdown. I don't know what this is. It's from Titan. It comes with some sort of game code. The kids, they know. They love it. We got Mr. Mammoth. That's a cool name. Oh, yeah. He looks like a goon. I'm totally in. And it's Matt Kent, who is amazing. So, I don't know what this is, but I bet I end up buying it. Damn you, Matt Kent. We got Survival Street. This book is amazing. You know, Sesame Street characters, if the world kind of went wrong. We got Big Guy and Rusty the Boy Robot. This is some classic Dark Horse comics right here. You should definitely check that one out. We have a new printing of Weapon X. This is the Barry Windsor Smith stuff from Marvel Comics Presents. Classic, if you haven't read it. Avengers Epic Collection, Volume 19. This covers the early 300s, as well as West Coast stuff. I got Thunderbolts, Volume 1. This was okay. I read a little of this. Different team. I like it. We got Kaya from West Craig, who worked on Deadly Class, if my brain is working correctly. Uh, I didn't read this, though. I got nothing. Yeah, Deadly Class. We have Erratic Recharged. Paul, you love Erratic. Loves it. Guy can't get enough. Absolutely love it. It was pretty cool. Also, uh, I can't get enough of Moon Knight Black, White, and Blood Treasury Edition. Look how pretty. It's so pretty. You can't kill a man with it, but that's okay. It's got enough blood on it already. First up, we got Unstoppable Doom Patrol. This is a uh, part of the D Dawn of DC uh, universe. Basically, due to the Lazarus, Lazarus Planet storyline, um, it has unlocked metagenes in a significant number of the population and as a result uh, we have more meta villains uh, meta heroes and just a bunch of people that are just letting their powers just go run amok and uh, Doom Patrol is here to not necessarily stop them but to more keep the actual superheroes and actual supervillains from either corrupting or beating them up or <laughs> throwing them in jail for powers that they really didn't ask for in the first place and that's where Doom Patrol comes in uh they have to go to gotham for something and have to fight uh these villains that are experimenting on um metagenes while also having to fight off batman who obviously just wants to lock them up and uh it's really interesting it's kind of neat because doom patrol's always been that off kilter kind of uh comic so this is much more of the same and um yeah it was it was definitely a good read all right first up for me from mad cave i got don't spit in the wind Number one, holy hell, this thing has some cool art. Uh, both of my books this week actually have cool art. This is just really interesting. Basically, we've destroyed our planet, much like we are now, and we've retreated to a space station hovering the Earth, and this team, this is like the crap job nobody wants. You have to go down to Earth and try to clean it up in giant machines and giant spacesuits because it's not very... Uh, it just very few things can live here. Certain animals can't, but humans definitely can't. And things go weird. Um, this, I enjoyed this book. I need a little more. Uh, but just from an art standpoint, amazing. Like, it reminds me of those image trencher books back in the day. It's got, like, that creepy weird style and just very colorful. I absolutely loved it. So I would like some more. Um, then I can give you, like, a better definite you need this or you don't. But... If you just want to look at a pretty art of some gross, weird planet, you got it. What's going on, you guys? My name is Matt. You may know me from Capes and Scowls fame. I decided this week to hop over and hang out with Tim and Paul. And this week, I decided to pick a one-shot from Marvel called It's Jeff. 
I was really hype on the book just seeing the cover and knowing a little bit about some of the online Marvel stuff that they're doing, but I opened this book to find that there are no words in it. So it was a little bit of a palate cleanser. There was not a lot of substance to it, but at the same time makes it very easy to digest and it was a quick 10 minute read. So pick it up for the kiddos, put it in your pole bin for the kiddos, give them something because you bought something. And my pick of the week, it is Indigo Children, issue number one. Uh, this is an interesting book. Basically the concept is you have um, a reporter trying to track down this story of a uh, weird child that um, uh, due to mathematics has been able to unlock crazy powers um, and yes it's a very cloak and dagger type book a lot of creepiness uh, happens um, as he's trying to uh, search down the story to find this kid or children or whatever um, a lot of cloak and dagger kind of things going on in uh, uh, rural Russia and things of that sort. It's interesting. Um, one of the issues that happens with a lot of image comics is you don't get a ton of narrative that kind of pushes the story around. You get just enough, but like just barely, uh, if not for the epilogue and the, and the prologues to this, you wouldn't really have a story that you're really understanding completely. Um, but it's giving you just enough to, uh, to see if you want to watch the, read the, uh, the next issue to see where this goes because the cliffhanger is kind of, um, there. So, uh, really interesting story, um, but may not be for everybody, but definitely quality to read. Uh, the writing is fantastic. The art is very good in the way that, it, uh, brings itself together and, um, yeah, check it out. All right. It's time for my pick of the week. Paul, what's my pick of the week? I have no idea. That's right. You don't. It's clobbering time. Number one from Marvel Comics. I don't think I've picked a Marvel book in a minute, have I? Huh, that's interesting. Uh, clobbering time. Really interesting. Uh, Steve Scroce? Scroce? I don't know how to say that guy's name, but he did the writing and the art, and it's very fun. Uh, it is a, about Bruce Banner and the thing, kind of, it's a, a, a version of the Watcher telling a story. And I, I assume each issue is just going to be self-contained stories about very massive fist fights, because um, the next issue has a different character with a thing. But they get sucked into a portal from some weird character who may or may not show up again, who has armor that is half Doctor Doom, half Iron Man, and probably some other characters thrown in there. He throws them into some weird reality. They have to fight monsters. They It's just the thing in the Hulk, fighting giant kaiju monsters. Again, like my other book, the art is amazing, and it's just a real treat. It's very gory and very violent, but I guess because it's monsters, they can get away with it. I had a blast reading it. I enjoy gory awful terrible things so um pretty good and it had a, a good sense of humor about it i like that bruce banner is like really appreciative of the ff but the hulk could care less so when he's stuck in hulk mode he's just kind of a jerk which is great and the thing just just eats so much crap but the book is good please check it out all right guys that is it thank you for checking us out and of course there is a new campfire ashes over on paul's podcast network also uh if you enjoyed matt and that brief little exchange he did there because words who needs them um he also does some stuff over on caves and scouts he's been doing weekly reviews which you might enjoy and you could still get these books you know off the shelf so that's it uh make sure you uh let us know in the comments below if you like matt or if we should just axe him because he can go real quick real easy it's not a problem uh but if you love him i guess we'll keep him around i know he didn't say a lot it's weird anyways that's it Bye.